Hi all, this is Taryn with Elegant Upgrades, and uh, we're coming back to this table. So if you didn't already see us disassemble and then reassemble this to make it a little more sturdy, uh, we did that a couple videos ago, and then I've just primed the piece because it was a bleeder, so I did need to do that. But it's actually great because that makes this a perfect base for our decoupage paper. So these are papers that I print on my own printer. I do have a larger format printer. You don't need one. You can just do it on a regular, you know, eight and a half standard, eight and a half by 11 standard printer. It's totally fine. So if you want to do a larger image, you would just blow it up and then do multiple sheets of paper. If you want to do a regular sized image, that's fine too. So here I'm just cutting the paper down to a reasonable size. I like to use tissue paper or newsprint paper, anything that's thinner than, you know, your your regular size paper. If you guys want kind of an idea on how I do that, I can try and do a video on that as well, if that's something you're interested in. But we're just going to go on from here. So I'm getting a basic size here. So you can see I creased the sides of the paper where it fit in with the frame of the piece. And then that's just kind of where I'm starting. I don't like my papers to be just straight lines across my piece because I feel like you can see them in the decoupage and in the paint and I just I don't like the way that it looks so when it butts up against the frame it's fine because you can't see it but anything floating around on there that I can see it, it's like an abrupt edge and, and it doesn't it doesn't make me happy so I'm taking my poly this one's from chalk mountain it's their satin poly it's what I almost always use for decoupage so it's sealing my table and also protecting it and putting my paper, like it just does all the things. Why, I mean, why would I use anything else? So you use a liberal amount. I've never had any issues with ink bleeding or anything like that during this part. If you get too much water on it, your ink may bleed, but I haven't had any issues with any of the poly. So I get this on here because this is an Alice in Wonderland theme and it's like the original illustrator it's okay if there's like wrinkles and I want this to look kind of aged because it's an old book it's an old story it's the original illustrator so I'm not going to use a brayer or anything like that I'm just using my hands if there's a couple wrinkles in it I'm totally fine with that that's just going to give it character so I'm putting this entire piece down with the poly but we're not going to leave it like this because like I said I don't like abrupt edges so you can see I'm kind of using the sponge. It helps me kind of move it around. It's fine. It just peeled off some of the paper. This is really, really thin. Um, but I'm going to work with that. That actually works out really well. If you think it took off too big of a piece, you can try and lay it back down. Um, I'm just going to discard it because it's not worth it to put it back on there, especially when I like jagged edges because they're easier to conceal. So this is very easy to tear because it's wet. You can choose to tear it before you lay it down, but I just assume that it's going to tear while I'm brushing over it with a sponge anyways, because I'm not letting it dry before I do my coat over the top. If you want like a pristine finish, you want to let this dry and then do an additional coat over the top. That's not what we're doing here. We want it to be rough and ragged, so it's going to start pulling up and I'm even kind of using the sponge to push off some of the paper as well. And then as far as placement goes, sky is easier for me to paint than grass and flowers and things like that because let, I, let's face it, I'm just not that good of an artist. <laughs> I, I don't have it in me. But clouds are fun and easy to paint and it's just a blend of blue. So that's why I chose to make sure that there was a heavier blank spot on top than there was at the bottom because that's where my strength lies and by strength I mean just not my incredible weakness for doing plant life at the bottom so I know this video is a little bit slower than normal but I wanted to make sure you guys could actually see this I feel like I speed through a lot of things um, 
that's why this video in particular is just about doing the top of this table and then the next video will be the overall paint job for the entire set of the piece but i wanted to make sure i was actually you know trying to teach something a little slower than i typically do You do want to make sure after they tear off that you're using your sponge or whatever applicator you're using to push it back down because sometimes the edges will lift there. You don't want any lifted edges. Okay, like I said, I don't like abrupt. I'm going to say the word edges again, but I'm sorry. You have to hear edges a lot. Edges, edges, edges. So I'm sanding this down because one, it will help distress the piece a little bit more and two, it's softening the transition line between the paper and the piece so it will be far less noticeable when I go to paint. If you don't care about the line between paper and tabletop or whatever you're putting this on, you can skip this step, absolutely, but I I care. I don't like eye twitches, and it, it would give me one, probably in both eyes. Now, obviously, I'm wiping out the dust. You don't want any of that left over. And then you can do another round of poly here if you want, if you felt like you went too far through it. But you do want this sealed and left overnight with poly on it. This is going to give you a barrier between your paint, which is the next step, and your paper. So if you didn't seal this, your paint would seep into the paper and potentially kind of bleed everywhere. And if you make any mistakes, you're kind of just stuck with them. But because we're sealing this again with poly over the top, now if you choose a color you don't like, or you spill something, or just any terrible, horrible thing that could happen, it will just wipe right off because it's been sealed, which is just a grand old time. Okay, I just busted out a whole bunch of my paints because I didn't know what I was going to use and I knew I wanted a lot of color in this because it's Wonderland and that's what, what they have there is a lot of color. I'm speaking <laughs> from experience, right? Okay, so this is so, so easy. You need so little paint. I take the lids off my paint and I've got three cups of water there just in case one gets tinted a little further than I want it to. And then my spray bottle. My brushes are wet, wet, wet as I'm doing this. And I'm just dipping them into the lids, which have also been misted with water. You want to be able to see through your paint. We're not putting on a thick layer of anything. It's like water coloring over this. You want the black lines from the ink to show through. And you're going to start with your darkest colors first as the base. So I don't mean you have to use black or grays or whatever dark colors throughout the entire piece, but anything that's like the flowers, how they started out with that pink color, they're going to get a lighter color on top of them because you can go a light color over the top of a dark, but if you do a dark over light, it won't show up. So you, as I did the green, I did like a really, really bright green kind of everywhere over the foliage. And then when I go back to other greens, there'll be darker ones that can be placed over the top of those. And then, like I said, on the flowers, it started out with the, with the pink color. And then I'm going to go over it with like a really subtle yellow for highlights. And you're just using water. Use your fingers to kind of smush things out a little bit. Don't be afraid to wipe something back if you don't like it. Like I said, we have poly on there. It's sealed. It's safe. You can totally wipe this off. If I wanted to right now, I could take a rag and just smear this whole thing off and I could start from scratch. 
So you're just kind of doing what you like. And then now I'm taking my darkest color green at the bottom and that is gonna hide all of like the torn lines and make it look like it is supposed to be a part of the tabletop. And I've got a damp paper towel and I just kind of go through and blot it in. You guys have seen me do like this little ragging technique. It's the same thing, but here on top of this piece, I'm just doing it everywhere. And then the sky is the same thing. So you can go a little heavier. It's obviously not super watered down on the top because there's no paper there that we're trying to show through. We're actually creating a sky here. And I did a blend of three colors, a deep mid to, into a light. Um, here, that really light aqua color, that is very, very watered down because I'm down into the things. And then I will actually let the paint increase and use less water as I'm bringing it up to the blue because that will also create its own transition. So it's all kind of from water to not as much water. I hope I'm making sense. And then see, I've got the paper towel again, just dabbing all over, helping it blend. And now we're adding clouds. So clouds for your base cloud is going to be, again, very watered down. And then you can go back over with stronger paint to add like highlights in the cloud. And then on the top ones, I misted them with water. You could see it kind of running down. That gives it kind of like that raining type look, like where it's a really full cloud and it's kind of raining down. That's just from the spray mister. Super easy. We're gonna seal this bad boy again with some more poly and it will be safe. I did two more coats of poly on top of this. So it has been polyed to the max. This thing is just so protected right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so next video, I will show you how to do the paint. I did a chair to match, so it's a cute little matching set. If you'd like to see how we did that, and I'll try and be slower on the blend in that because it is a full on crazy rainbow blend, as you'll see here. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are liking, subscribing, all that jazz, my journey. I'm trying to buy a house. Well, I'm trying to get a down payment to buy a house, let's be real. So here's the finished result. If you'd like to see how I did the full set, um, yeah, next video. Next video will be that. Thanks again. I will see you guys next time.